I got an interesting request last week to do a custom board design for a small scale bowling lane. As you may have seen in some of my earlier videos, I actually designed a, a bowling scoring system that works on both half scale and full scale lanes. I think I released it somewhere around 2011 or so, and it saw relative popularity in the industry. Now, this board basically is going to be responsible for communicating with OpenScore and actually triggering the scoring mechanism when the ball passes through an infrared beam. So, in this video, we're actually going to lay out the PCB in a very simple tool called fritzing, and we're actually going to send our boards off to be manufactured, we're going to get them back, and then we're going to put it all together and see if it works. So, stick around. Okay, so we've got Fritzing downloaded from fritzing.org, and when you open it, you get a couple of different views. You've got breadboard view, schematic view, and PCB view. Um, you've also got code view in case you want to type up the firmware code, but uh, for right now, we will actually be working in the PCB view because that's pretty much drag and drop. So um, we can resize this, this board actually to kind of whatever we want. It's really going to be sized around our main microprocessor, which is actually going to be an Arduino Nano. Really, we only need one digital pin for this, and that's really to sense when the infrared beam has been broken. And the type of infrared sensors we're going to use actually uh, kind of close a switch whenever that happens. There's some onboard stuff that those take care of for us. So in reality, the only thing we really care about is when the beam is broken. And as such, we really only need one, um, one digital I.O. pin. So if we actually open up our parts bin here, we can search for an Arduino Nano. Uh, sometimes it takes a minute to, uh, to actually open. So uh, we can actually look for Nano. And here we go. We actually find an Arduino Nano Rev3 with ICSP, but we'll just drag the 3.0 on because really that's all we need. Um, cool. So there we go. We can actually click this, reposition the label. We'll name that CPU and center that up. There we go. And uh, we can actually start dragging out our connectors. Pretty much the only thing we really want are a connector for the transmitter and the receiver. And really all the transmitter is going to require is about five volts. And the Arduino Nano is, actually has more than enough power uh, to actually power that. So we will actually search for header in our parts bin, um, and we should be able to find some fairly generic headers here. I really don't know why I searched for it. We could also have gone to the, the, the core view, but that looks pretty good. Um, generic female header, we should be able to make this work. Um, the pitch, we will actually leave at point or 2.54 millimeters we'll bump that up uh, to three pins uh, so for plus minus and a key generally anytime that we have multiple connectors uh, we will key them uh, so we'll actually cut one pin off and plug one end of the connector um, so that you can't put the connectors on in the wrong places or whatever um, so we'll actually rotate this let's see 90 degrees counterclockwise looks good and we will rotate that 90 degrees clockwise so we'll drag this over here and we will name this trans1 for transmitter 1 and we're dragging the silk screen making sure they're not touching and we can actually copy paste trans2, and then we can also basically duplicate that, copy paste, receiver, one, or receiver two, and drag. So fritzing is okay. Um, it's, it's really good if you're just doing simple through-hole designs. Um, I honestly wouldn't recommend it if you're doing a lot of surface mount stuff or if really it's just a more complex board. Um, I would suggest something like KiCad. Um, it's a fantastic tool, but fritzing is actually really good if you just need something uh, pretty quick. 
so we're actually going to space this out just a little bit and we're going to do uh, one more connector here and in reality I'm going to drop a connector on here for an external 5 volt input um, and that's really just in case there are applications here that um, kind of outdo the power capabilities of the uh, Arduino Nano. Cool. So we're going to do external 5 volt in right there. All right. So we've got our connectors laid out. Now it's actually time to start connecting our headers um, over to our IO pins. So now what we want to do is we actually want to connect these signal pins. Now these signal pins, well I actually added a port here for a second pair of transmitters just in case we want to have growth later on in the design. So we'll actually keep those there. But we do want some signal paths. Now we notice that we don't have a lot of leeway here with the signal paths on the bottom layer or on the uh, top layer. All these, you know, all this yellow is in the way. But what we can do is we can actually stay here on the bottom layer and uh, find our digital pins. Let's see, I think uh, D2 and D3 should work pretty well. So we'll take receiver one, drag it over. Mm, let's actually drag that to D3. That might be counterintuitive, but I'll explain that in a minute. I'll just sort of bang that over here. And again, it's sort of a a maze. Awesome. Now receiver 2, we'll actually drag it to D2 and this is why I did that. So now we won't have any places where we need to cross. However, I do notice an issue. We'll actually need to bring this out a little farther. In reality, we might need to actually do a little bit more. Sweet. All right, that track is a little long, but that'll work. It's a pretty simple circuit. And again, this is just rapid, rapid prototyping here. And we will also put this through our design rule check. All right. Perfect. All right. So now we've got all of our grounds connected. We've got our signal two, signal one for transmitter one. It's actually backwards. But uh, yeah, all of that looks pretty hunky dory. So. Um, we've got everything, um, yeah, pretty much everything connected up. This should be all we need. Now what we're actually going to do is we'll do a couple of ground fills. So I will actually right click this and we will set ground fill seed. And basically what we're going to want to do is pour uh, copper into these, um, pretty much into the voids here. So we will actually do ground fill and we will actually do, um, we can actually switch over to both layers. We should be able to do routing, ground fill, top and bottom, and boom, cool. So now all of our grounds are connected, which is great. Um, we got this nice ground layer here, so it'll carry any stray noise away. And we've got a little bit of the insulation around our, uh, between the uh, ground layer and our actual bottom traces. So that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, showing some love there. Looks great. So now uh, we should be good to go. Um, so what we can actually do is since we're done designing this, uh, we can actually quickly run a DRC check here or a DRC. Um, actually, we'll keep the default settings. Cool. So it didn't find any problems with the board. Um, our traces are far enough apart, which is generally what I get flagged for if you're trying to run these traces too close together. Um, it can be a little bit of a pain, but uh, so far 
I think we're okay. So, wonderful. Let's uh, let's uh, make sure everything looks good. Cool. All right. So what we can actually do now is we can actually export these uh, for production as an extended uh, Gerber set. Um, because really most of those, um, let's see here. We'll, we'll export these Gerbers here. Um, because most of the board houses just want a set of Gerbers. All right, so we got our Gerbers here. We can actually export them and uh, we will compress all of these into a zip and we can actually open up PCB way and we can upload these. But first what we can do is actually get a quote and uh, the, what we need are the board dimensions and it's about 39.6 by 70.3 millimeters. And we can do, let's try 10 pieces, whatever. Default thickness should be good. Uh, looks like it's going to be about $5 for 10 of them. Sweet, awesome. We can actually change this. We'll do some blue solder mask. Uh, looks good. And we'll get this submitted. Okay, so fast forward a couple days and the boards just came in. It took them about three days to both make and ship the boards from China and the service was spectacular and I'm really actually pleased with the result. Um, so I ordered 10 prototypes. Uh, usually I just kind of do a small batch right after I first design the circuit just to make sure everything works and uh, they actually gave me 11. They, they did ship uh, a few extra here and um, uh, I was looking at the boards to see maybe if one was botched or something like that maybe they threw an extra one in and all of them actually look really good. So uh, we do, you know, the boards came in, uh, we've got, you know, the connectors, if this will focus, there we go. We have all the connectors, we've got our external power, got CPU ports, uh, all that good stuff. So the boards are uh, about the size of a business card, so a nice and small footprint. So we're actually going to put this on the bench and we're going to populate it. Okay, so we've got our soldering iron heated up to about 700 degrees. Uh, I'm going to prop... I'm going to actually put these connectors in, these headers, um, with the ramps on them. I'm actually going to go ahead and put those in. And we're actually going to prop this up. I, I don't have the uh, helping hands. Oh, I've got a got text message. Um, so actually, I'm going to kind of put these here. And we're going to prop them up with the, uh, with the flash drive, just sort of a hack. And OK. so. Now we've got everything level. Those uh, pins look pretty good. We're going to just, just tack those on with a little bit of solder. Okay. Cool. So connectors are on. Um, everything's looking good. Got those. Uh, I'm only actually going to mount uh, the first couple. These ones I added for expansion. We've also got a port here for external 5 volts, which I don't think we'll need. Um, also, you'll notice I did add a little open score silk screen thing there, so you got the little logo. Um, now, with regards to the CPU, um, we're actually using the uh, Arduino uh, Nano, and uh, they're very affordable, uh, but it's, it's very powerful. It's actually a lot more powerful than we need for this. So. Um, I, I could actually put some headers on there and actually just kind of put it, you know, put it there. But in reality, we probably won't ever really have to change these. These are pretty, uh, pretty resilient boards. I've been testing mine for quite a while. Um, so actually, I think I'm actually just going to put it through the holes and we're going to go ahead and solder it. So it'll be part of the board as if it's just integrated. But again, these, uh, these things are, you know, pretty, pretty cheap. So it's actually just going to sit on the board like that. So nice and nice and flush, and uh, we can go ahead and just sort of tack that on. And I did all of the um, larger components. Uh, all, do all the large components last? So you start with your lowest components on the board. Cool. Got it all soldered together. Um, 
so I'll have to trim some of these leads off, but uh, yeah, I think that should about do it. So, as you've just seen, we were able to lay out the design in Fritzing and send the designs off to the PCB fabricator in China, get the boards back in a couple of days, and populate the board in a matter of minutes, and then we were testing with OpenScore. As you just saw, everything worked, so now it's just a nice, simple plug-and-play system, and we will actually have this product available in our store at 86pixels.com slash OpenScore, and you can actually hook that up to your open score setup and have automatic infrared ball triggering for your full scale or half scale lane. In the next video, we're going to return back to our operating system series and we're going to begin designing the Wi-Fi setup methods and things like that. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time.